Hey crafty friends, how are you today? I hope you're all okay. Um, today I'm combining two of my favorite things to create and that is a mini album and a box. Basically paper crafting and paper engineering all rolled into one. So I'm going to start with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful camera chipboard by Basically Bear. And what I did is traced my... I had two camera chipboards, but I needed so many more. So what I did was trace those um, camera chipboard on paper and on thin uh, chipboard so I could create my pages of my album. So I cut the chipboard and the paper and covered the chipboard with the paper and they're all uh, the same shape. Basically what you need to uh, make sure is that the sides of the camera because if you turn it over it looks different. So and if you need to cover both sides of the chipboard then you need uh, two directions of the same camera. So what you do is trace it on one direction, turn it over and trace it on the other direction and this way you have two pieces of paper for each chipboard. I hope that was clear. Um, so then just I just covered my chipboard with the paper. Uh, sometimes you, you know you cut it with your scissors and sometimes it's not very very accurate so if you need to trim it a little bit uh, so the chipboard will match the paper exactly, so just do that with your scissors, like I'm doing here. You know, when you don't cut it with a laser cutter, then it might not be very accurate, and that's just okay. That's the magic of creating. It doesn't have to be accurate. And if you have something that bothers you, then you just fix it. So this is all my papers, my all my pages covered with paper, and this is going to be the front of my mini album. My camera mini album is supposed to be this way. Um, the, the camera chipboard comes in bare or black. Uh, so if you have the bare kind, you just paint it with black acrylic paint. So now I'm creating my lens. This is, uh, I'm using stickless, stickless, yeah, that's how you call it, stickless. It's by Ranger. It's a kind of a glitter glue, 3D glitter glue, which just stays like that. So I'm just going over the, the circle in the middle, and I'm going to put it aside because it takes a little bit to dry. Now, I'm not going to go over each and every page because that will take very long time and I really want to teach you how to do the box so I'm just going to show you one or two pages I'm distressing all the pages on the edges and uh, I'm also using uh, the film strip from Tim Holtz I really love this I've been waiting for the opportunity to use it so this is I mean you guys this is like I love this film strip so this is the perfect opportunity to use it because we're all about cameras and photos and it just goes really well. This is going to be a pocket that uh, we're going to insert photos or tags in, in it. I uh, forgot to tell you that I'm using Prima Papers. This was a really great opportunity to use all my scraps of papers because the pages are quite small so I can I had an opportunity to use all my scraps and cut the all the embellishments and the tags and the, even the papers that I covered the pages with from different collections of Prima. So this is a white chipboard I'm using for um, where I colored it with a little bit of alcohol ink and adding a flower there. Didn't want to use too many flowers here, so I'm just here and there, one or two flowers. I really wanted to go with the gears and cogwheel themes, uh, like in old cameras and the inside. This is what was working in there. And a camera is a, is a kind of is a machine, or at least it used to be a machine with parts. So these are the tags there. So 
this is the theme I was going for. Um, this is a little envelope that I'm adding. I try to increase the space for photos and journaling tags because the pages are quite small. So what I did were pockets and envelopes and places to insert tags and or photos if you want. And of course you can create more pages so you have more room for more photos and journaling tags. So this is my second page. And we're gonna I edited this because I wanted to show you the front of the uh, mini album. I bet what I basically did is I embellished all my pages as well as my um, front. And now I'm inserting the film strip into the ring for a little bit more of a camera theme embellishment. What I did in the front is I have a film strip chipboard there and a few cogwheels and stickers saying our photos. It's not, it's very simple. Um, this is now the inside. I'm going to cover the hole and add a sticker. P is for photo and a little bit more stickers with the photo scene, with the photo theme, sorry. This is by Seven Gypsies. Just adding a few more stickers. This is the inside of the cover. Now for the box. Um, I have measurements for you, but I wanted to show you how to measure. You basically have to measure all sides of the mini album, and this will give you the measures of your boards for the box. So I'm just writing them down, the height, the width, and the length. And this will tell you how to build your box. So basically what you have here is the lid, then you have the front, then you have both sides of the box, the bottom, and the back. This is how we're going to assemble our box. I'm using... Um, score tape. It's a uh, half an inch score tape and this is how I'm going to join all the boards together and form the box. So what we're doing, we're attaching one board halfway on the score tape, leaving half open to attach the next board to it. Now when you attach it, first add a little bit of glue so the joint will be really strong. And when you attach it, it's better to do it uh, vertically, like in 90 degrees, because this will compensate for the width of the chipboard. Because if you join them both in a horizontal way, when you fold it, you'll have a problem. So you need to compensate for the width of the chipboard, which is like, it's very, very narrow, but less than a sixteenth of an inch, but still, it's there, and you have to take that into account. So now, going ahead, we're joining all the pieces. We have the back the bottom and this is going to be the front. I written, I've written on each piece of uh, each piece of the uh, chipboard what part is it so it will not be a problem for me to uh, join them later join them together so I won't get mixed up. Because sometimes let me tell you it's really confusing. Okay you guys moving on we have all the the lid, the front, the back, and the bottom. And now we're going to join the sides. Um, first I'm joining them on their bottom part. Because the last stage will be forming the box. First you have to join all the pieces together. So we're going to add a little bit of glue. 
white glue is the best, white binding glue or tacky glue is the best to use by the way. And always make sure to burnish your uh, score tape in your where you have glue so it will be really nice and strong. Then now for the other side of the box. Burnish it so it will be nice and strong. Now we're going to start working on the sides. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because now you don't have your table to be the, uh, the flat surface which you burnish on or it will kind of be in the air. You'll understand in a minute what I'm talking about. So it's kind of tricky, but with lots of patience, it can be done. Slowly, slowly. And the first one might be a little bit difficult, but then you just, it gets easier. So now we start doing the corners. You see what I'm talking about? It's in the air. But what you can do is turn it on the table and burnish it there like so. It helps if you fold the score tape a little bit and just guide it where it needs to go. So just give it the first contact and then burnish it upside down on the table like so, you see? Now for the other side. This is the trickiest part because you have to do it both of them together. I recommend for the first time you build a box to use uh, wider score tape or strips of uh, cardstock. It will be easier. Now I've taken um, one inch width of uh, black cardstock strips and we're going to do the outside of the box. This is for two reasons. One, it's more beautiful like that. You can't leave this white cover of the score tape, plus it won't hold. It's, it will peel off. So one is because it looks nicer, and the second reason is because you have to strength, strengthen all the connection points and all the, the the corners of the box. It has to be really strong, otherwise it will fall apart. So when you put another strip on it, it makes it stronger. So you just peel off. Well, first you have to put on all the places, on all the corners, you have to put um, score tape. It's actually from before. You don't have to put more score tape. It's what was before when you build the box. So you just have to peel them off and put on the black strips of the card stock and make sure that it's all on all the corners of the box. The bottom ones on the outside, the bottom ones, the side ones, the ones on the lid, Now, if some of the score tape is going to be one on top of the other because this is how we build the box, but don't worry, just peel it off. It peels really uh, easily, even if it's under another piece of score tape. So I'm also doing the edges of the box, even though there is no connection point there, but in order for the look to be uniform and for everything to look the same, you have to do all the uh, edges as well of the lid and of the box. So if you have some places you need to add glue, then just add glue so it will stick better. So now I'm doing the edges, the upper edges of the box. See like so, so it will have a nice finish to it on all four sides and the lid as well. I'm going to do the lid. The 
this will, will close the box. There is a, a bit of work here because you have to cut all the parts and glue them one by one. But let me tell you, you guys, it's so much fun. I love building boxes and stuff. Um, I hope this will inspire you to try it too because it's so much fun. You get to do it the size you want, you get to do the width, the, the whatever you want to do. Plus, let me tell you, it's much cheaper than buying a box. And if you need a box a specific size and you don't have it, then it's very, very frustrating. So now we're going to cover the box with some papers. First, of course, I'm going to distress the edges with some ink. And then you just glue all the pieces of papers on the box all around on the outside and see the beautiful black um, frame that you have because of the strips of black cardstock that we put before <coughs> excuse me so you just keep on adding them well and also from the inside of the lid don't forget to distress you guys distressing is very important gives it much more definition Now we're going to do the inside of the box and we're gonna put um we're gonna add here black strips of cardstock to all the corners on the inside as well. So what you do you take your strip you of course you have to fight I'm sorry I didn't tell you this but I forgot. Uh you have to fold all the strips in half so that will make it much easier to use so you hold it fold it and then you insert it to the inside of the box and you just glue it in there and now we have to cover all the inside of the box as well And basically, the measurements for all the panels of paper that uh, are covering the box is you take the measurement of the part, the piece of the box, and you uh, cut it smaller in half an inch. So this way it gives you the, um, the right size and the black frame around it will show. So if it's 5 inches by 2 and 5 eighths, then you take half an inch, or let me say quarter of an inch less on each side, and that will be enough. So now I'm creating the cover of the front of my box, and what I'm creating is a lens. Uh, what I did is cut the from the um, the strip of black cardstock I just cut it in small triangles so it can I can form a circle and I can adhere it to the back of my camera and this is my lens and coloring a little bit with this with the uh, alcohol inks my gears my cog wheels and i'm adding them to the camera there now i'm going to i want to add some film strip 
on the lens and this is also going to be later the closure mechanism for the box so I'm not cutting it yet it's going to I'm going to leave a, like a tail of film strip now I'm uh, adhering my camera to the front of the box with some 3D foam tape and then I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the film strip that I still didn't cut it as you can see it's still connected to the camera so now I'm putting some small score tape pieces on the edge I've cut it with some scissors, I'm sorry it's out of frame, and now I'm adhering it to my front of the camera. A little bit of masking with some gear patterns. This is going to be the top of my box. This is a big Sort of a cogwheel, I guess. I don't. I know. I have no idea what to call it. I'm gonna give it some more color because it's kind of boring. So with alcohol, I think it's great for metal. I'm not even using a heat tool because I want the color to be very subtle. I'm not drying it with a heat tool. Whatever is there is there. It's enough for me. I'm going to put it here on top. Now I'm taking a strip of film strip and one side is going to be adhered under the camera. The other side I'm going to attach uh, Velcro to it and on top of it another black circle which I punched. One, one and an eighth of an inch and I've attached the film strip to it and this is has focal on the other side and sort of a handle with the closure a little bit of glitter on my camera just with my fingers So this is the finished box, this is how it looks on the outside.